Hi guys, thanks for joining me and thank you to Debbie for that lovely introduction. My name is Sam and uh, my company is called Mum's Makery and we produce, create and design needle felting kits, templates, tools and tutorials. I am absolutely delighted to be here today with you and to spend some time with you and during that time we are going to be making and I'm going to be demoing a step by step on how to make this gorgeous Highland Thistle needle felted brooch. There is a kit available for that brooch on the website and that contains everything that you need including the two templates to make a complete brooch. The website is www.mumsmakery.co.uk. There is a special offer on for that kit for the craft shows live weekend event and it will be a discounted price until the end of Sunday so that's the end of tomorrow. You can obviously then watch this tutorial on playback here once the show is over. It would be great to hear from you and I will try to reply to all questions after the demo. So make sure you join in the conversation as well by using the CCS live hashtag and please leave your comments by contacting me below and tag me using the at Mums Makery tag. Mums Makery does also have a Facebook group and that's www.facebook.com slash groups slash Mums Makery. We would love for you to come and join us, share your mates and come be a part of our wonderfully fluff filled group. I do know that some of you are itching to get started so let's hop straight in and start making our Highland Thistle brooch. What I'm going to do first is just quickly run through tools, equipment and materials. There is a quick kit for this project which you can find on our website and that has all of the supplies in it that you need to make one of these lovely brooches. What I will be using are some 24 gauge wires, some feathers, some florist tape, a tussie. The fibres that I'm going to be using in this project are our moss colour and our sugar plum. Also you get the two templates that you need to make this project as well. Additional tools and equipment, I will be using my pocket scale and if you don't have a pocket scale I really do recommend one. They allow you to weigh out very small increments of wool consistently. I will be using a pair of snippy scissors. I have a pair of wire cutters and I will be working on my foam mat which has my flat mat topper and my felt sheet on top of that. And of course I've got my felting needles. That's everything that we need. So we're gonna jump straight in and start making our wonderful thistle brooch. The first part I'm gonna show you is the thistle head. And for that I've weighed out 0.3 grams of the sugar plum colored wool. And I've also weighed out 0.5 grams of the moss color. The first part we're going to create is the, the sort of thistle head and I'm going to take my 0.3 grams of sugar plum and I'm just going to pull and stack and pull and stack because I want the length of this to be the staple length of the fibres. So I'm just going to pull and stack and really kind of make a good bunch. Then you're going to take it and fold it in half. And grab this end, this middle that you've just folded. This template's slightly different than my normal ones. You've got this great big notch here. And putting it that way up so the opening is at the top, you're going to take this fold and put it straight down into that slot and then turn the whole thing over and you see it sort of encapsulates the fibres like so. I'm using my 40 spiral which is a very light needle and I'm just going to give it a very light felt, nothing too heavy, I just want to just hold those fibres in place right there. And then what I'm going to do is grab 
the green and just pull off about a third of it. You can use the pocket scale to weigh it out if you want, it's entirely up to you. But I'm going to pop it in and first off I'm just going to run around those edges. The edges are good to establish first. And then all of this extra fibre I'm just going to pop into the middle. And then nicely around that top, just making sure that we felt down into those purple fibres. And then we're just going to quickly give it a little felt all over. And I'm not felting very hard, I'm not driving into my surface, I'm just using the first part of my needle. You will get your project stick ever so slightly to your surface but that's the sort of thing that we're that we're looking at at the moment it's very very light so just pop that back under my template felt it down just a little bit more in this area now there's a couple of ways that you can do the wiring part this template as does most of them have my wiring holes which makes inserting wires into your projects a lot simpler. So I'm going to grab a, a 24 gauge wire and you could probably do this with half a wire. Um, I'm going to do this, I'm just going to grab this one but I'm going to take my finger, let's see, probably this finger and give it a little loop because what we're looking for is a loop that'll just fit inside that sort of bulb area there. And I do realise it's sort of green on green at the moment, so it's not easy to see, but hopefully you can see that. And then twist off the rest of the wire. Then what you do is, there's the wiring hole, pop your wire, down through so that your bulb is in that part there or your loop rather is in the bulb part a pinch of fluff and we're going to make sure that we stab inside of that loop and then around the outside of that loop and what that's going to do is really secure that wire in there without the need for glue so all over getting those fibres nicely inside that template and now what we're going to do is really build up this sort of main bulb part so I'm going to pop that and again edges I like a little bit of an overlap on the outside of the template and then bring them in. I'm going to keep this little pinch I'm going to get that down in into the template and you can see it's filling up quite nicely I will be doing this quite rapidly but you'll probably spend a little bit more time on it than I have today So make sure that we get nicely up into that top, like so. And again, still not driving into that surface. We just want the fibres to connect together. We don't want to attach it to the surface. So see, I've got a little bit of adhesion there. Just lightly, lightly tease it off back into the template. And go around the edges quite a bit because what we want to do is we want to create that sort of bulb shape it'll be flat on the back which is fine obviously for a brooch but we do want that sort of classic sort of thistle bulb so I'm going to go round and round the outside quite a bit 
give it a wiggle on the mat and go back over it again a little bit over the middle not too hard then if I take this out so I pull it you can see you've got that really good thistle, thistle shape I'm going to pop it back in the template but there. this little bit is for sort of neatening everything up and the way that I do it is take your thistle bulb wrap this over pop it back into the template sorry that's upside down let me try that again so face up again or the notch is face up again pop it in and I've got my fibers wrapped over what will be the front of the brooch and then stuff that all the way back down into the template turn it back over and you can see it just helps give you a nice little neat finish secure those fibers in place a little bit of felting on the back and then turn it over and go round the edges on the front again a little bit of light stabbing over the bulb just to make sure we're nice and secure and there we go probably need a little bit of a tidy up around there but that's how we get that sort of first basic shape and you can always pop it back into the template anytime like so and go over it a little bit more now your refining technique is going to be lots and lots of tiny tiny little stabs all over the surface which will really sort of firm this up I'm going to give it a little bit more just over that neck pop it out have a look Yep, happy with that. A little bit of a neatening up. You can just go round and tidy it up. You want to use the first tip of the needle for a sort of barb. And go over and there you've got your really nice sort of thistle head. Grab your pair of snippy scissors. And then just cut, sort of cut into it this way rather than sort of going around that way just cut into it roughly where you want your uh, sort of thistle flowering part to end and you want to do it a little bit choppy like so and that's that's the thistle head done. Like I said, you'll spend more time just firming this up and refining it than I've got chance to do here. But that's it. That's the head made. To complete this part, we're going to cover some of the wire in florist tape. What I like to do, these are very short fibres so to get a piece suitable for wrapping just kind of overlay them out like that and just a few tacking stabs up and down lift it off and that will knit these fibers together so that you can wrap with them in a much longer piece and take it to the back and just attach then just give yourself a little bit of a wrap around there and then back up to the head and finish off just by securing those fibers in place and this, what this does is this makes a nice sort of transition 
and gives us a sort of a little bit of a step between the contrast of the of the fluff to the florist tape. There we go. Let's go grab my snippy scissors. Probably don't need that extra wool in there. There we go. For those of you who haven't used florist tape before, it sticks to itself but not to you. And you activate the sticky by holding the end and dragging down the length of the piece and the surface changes and it now sticks to itself. What I'm going to do is start up overlapping the fluff that we've just added around the stem, bring the florist tape round and lock it on itself and then pinching with my fingers I'm just going to drag off down the stem. We're not going to be using all of this wire and your piece of wire may be shorter than mine. And then I'm just going to come back and start from the back this time and again round over itself pinch and twist and that will give us a nice covering on that wire. so so that's our flower head done we're going to pop that to one side so i thought i'd stop for a minute and just pop back over and a chat to you if you are inspired by all things fluff then please do join us for the mum's makery autumn fair which is next saturday it's on the 12th of september and it's a fun filled day of games giveaways life makes and a lot more there is an event box which is still available and it contains all the goodies that you need to join in with both of the live makes and some extras as well. However, it isn't needed to join in the day's events and the Pixie Prize giveaway draws will be going live in the Facebook group tomorrow, I think that is. And that's just open to all members. There is a full day schedule for all of the event info and that's on our website. So that's www.mumsmakery.com. .co.uk and if you have any questions then please don't hesitate to shoot me a message. So we're going to go back now and carry on making our Highland Thistle brooch. Next I'm going to show you how to do the leaf and to begin with I've weighed out one gram of the green wool. The leaf template when you start to fill this we start from the points in the outside and work towards the middle. We're going to be using, or I'm going to be using, my 40 spiral again. I find that the light needle is excellent for laying down fibres because it's very gentle. There's no real weights and measures to this particular part, but what we're looking for is an even spread. I'm going to be doing this quite quickly, but I'm going to take my piece and what I like to do is I fold back the tip so I've got that little rolled edge and then that rolled edge I put up into the rolled edge of the template and I find that just having those fibres going the right way to start with infinitely helps getting nice points so very very light little bit of light tack to the surface just to help hold it in place. Take the next pinch, fold back the end and pop it up into the next point. And we want to leave a good amount of overlap in the middle. I'm going to turn it round a little. I'm going to slightly smaller piece because it's a smaller point. Fold that end back. Now what you can do is put half of the wool down into the template, then put the wire in, then put down the other half. And you can absolutely do it that way. For this purpose, I'm just going to make the leaf shape and put the wire on the back. As it's a brooch, we don't need to worry too much about the back. Um, it's not sort of visible when, when being worn. 
so that the wire doesn't have to be in the middle. So I've got a big tuft here. I'm going to take that up into that point there. Allow some of that fibre to frizz out into the middle. Next point. We're just going to work our way right around, just putting in all of those points. I said I'm just piercing the top of my surface, so there's some very light adhesion, but I'm not permanently attaching it to my mat. So right up in those tips. And then lightly over. Like so. Working our way round. Again, fold back. Up into that tip. And then overlap the rest of the project. And again, I am doing this as swiftly as I can. I'm just going to turn that back round now. Another bit down into the bottom. So I'm going to have that overlap, run round the edge, and then bring these fibres in and allow it all to sort of blend out up into the rest of the project. I've still got a little bit here. The weights and measures can be found on the website under the project infos and downloads link. I have all of the weights for all of the templates that we do as a sort of quick reference guide. So if you ever get stuck, you can always refer to that. So I'm just gonna check I haven't got any real sort of thin bits. I think I'm quite happy with that. And I'm just gonna spend a moment now really lightly foot just the first barb you don't have to use all of the needle if you drive into your mat what you'll do is you'll push all of these fibers out into your mat whatever surface you're using and you'll end up with an awful lot of your project embedded into your mat the flat mat is excellent for you know thin delicate work like this nice and thin you can see there we go. And don't be tempted just to grab and pull. Just start lightly and just tickle it off your mat like that. And it's a bit messy, but that's our first pass. And I'm going to take it, just start getting it back down into your template all the way up. The more that this firms up, the less it will actually stick to your mat as well. So we're going to work on firming it up now. I'm still using my 40 spiral, but I am going to switch to my multi needle just for speed. There we go. That's back down in that template now. A little bit of a wiggle just to make sure. I've noticed that it's a bit thin on the ground right there in the middle. So I'm just going to pull off a pinch. And the trick to adding more is to allow it to frizz out into the rest of the project. Don't try and roll it up and put it in the, just in that one spot. There we go. Still a little bit thin just on that edge. So I'm going to put the bulk of the fibres in there. But that sort of nice blend means that you'll not end up with any harsh lines. So there we go. I'm going to grab my three needle. This is my three needle holder. And I like this one because the needles are in a straight line. The pen tool ones tend to have of one that is offset and 
those are usually disastrous in templates. <laughs> so I'm going to work over this very carefully, but very speedily. And again, I'm using the first barb on my needle, just lightly going over it and over it and over it. And this is the one bit where just taking that little bit of extra time. And you can absolutely do this with a single needle. I think all of the needles that I've got in here are 40 spirals. I do tend to find that the light needles work a lot better for these sort of more delicate leaf and petal projects. So I'm just taking it out again, popping it back into the template. And you can see from that last pass that it really does um, start not to stick the firmer it gets. There's hardly any adhesion. But just go over it and give it a little bit of a wiggle. Go over it again, a little bit of a wiggle. And we're just going to keep going over and over and over it until it's really crisp, really firm. Um, just keep going over. This is nowhere near the firm that I would like at the moment, but I'm going to show you how to put the wire in. You can see this is the side that I've been working on. And this is the side that has been facing the flat mat. And you can see the difference. The flat mat really does bring out a gorgeous surface. Okay, so what I'm going to do now is grab another 24 gauge wire. And you probably will need a whole wire for this. I'm going to pop this back into the template just real quickly. get that back in there and because I am an errant fiddler I must have just felt it that little bit more <laughs> just make sure it's all nestled down in there quite nicely okay so this is the side that I'm going to be putting the wire on because I'm going to be saving this lovely side for um, this is the side that will be facing outwards and like what we did with uh, the head template, there's no real um, sort of science to this part. It is just make a very thin loop and you don't want it to go all the way up into here. You just want it to come up to the sort of main bulk down to about here and twist it off. The thing with using a loop is that you can use felt or you can use the felting process to help hold that wire in place. You could dot some little bits of super glue onto the wire, put it in the wiring hole, hold it down. A few dots of super glue, just hold it in place while it dries, then leave it for 10 minutes and come back and put some wool over the top. But for those of you who know me, <laughs> you know that glue and I are not friends. So I'm going to opt for the non-gluing option, lest I stick myself to everything. And again, I'm going to start off just by carefully felting inside that loop. Making sure that we've got some fibres down inside of that loop and then felt to the outside of that loop and I'm back to my 40 spiral I do love the 40 spiral I find that it's a delicate work it just ticks all the boxes for me it would be my one needle of choice I think start middle and finish so I'm just going to wiggle that a little bit 
because I'm attaching these fibres, I am I am going right through until I can feel my mat, but I'm not going into my mat. It's very important to try and keep your work as light as possible. And the, the flat mat is great for that because you can feel, you really can feel the denseness when you when you hit that mat and that just tells you to stop. You know, if you want to do the driving motion through and out into something, you've really got to mean it. So I'm going to add a little pinch more just down in the bottom. You can see I've got a little bit of wire showing. And be careful, take your time with it because you do have these wires in there now. And that's it. We have our leaf. So you will work, turn it over and then that refining technique of just using that first barb and go over this leaf millimetre by millimetre and it's this time this refinement time which will really make this project nice and firm there I'm going to leave it there because I'm going to now wire or I'm going to now use the florist tape on the bottom of this leaf so we can bring that into line with the flower head and again I'm just going to grab a little bit of that fluff few tacking stabs just to give myself a piece that will hold up as I wrap. Take it to the back, a little bit of adhesion to what's there and then just a little bit of a wrap back up to the back and felt it in it in place. Snip off that excess. And then same deal again with the florist tape. Grab and pull. Overlap your covered wire. Bring it round lock it on itself and just give yourself a bit of a wrap down your wire like so okay so that's the leaf done so that I pop back over again I seem to be over there an awful lot <laughs> um I just wanted to take a moment just to say that if you'd like to see more of the Mums Makery stuff then we do have a YouTube channel and there's lots of free tutorials over there for many of our projects. The address is youtube.com slash Mums Makery and please do consider subscribing to the channel. I hope you are all enjoying this uh, time here making the Highland Thistle Poach so uh, now I've had a quick break we'll get back to it. Here's the leaf and the thistle head, which I have gone over and done that refining technique, and you can see you can see the difference that that refining technique makes. You could also glide a steam iron over this; that will also give you a very nice surface, but. My advice is don't put any pressure on it. You want to retain a thickness to the thistle leaf. There's lots of videos on my YouTube channel um, where I show you ironing petals and leaves and things. But there's our thistle brooch. And what we're going to do now is add in the little elements that really make this project pop. One of these feathers, and if you have a look at the original, we've got a feather and some ribbon here. And this ribbon, uh, which I think I did, <laughs> I think I did actually miss it off 
in the beginning um, this is actually included in the kit as well you get everything you get the ribbon the feathers the tussie everything so this is about 25 centimeters of ribbon all I'm going to show you now is how I create that little ribbon element so just fold fold the thing in half roughly and just tie yourself a knot as close close as you can but you really want to pull it really make sure that that's near the end and just snip off any little excess grab another one of your 24 gauge wires and putting the knot in the middle loop your wire in half and I hope that worked on camera so that's what we've got I'm going to do that again just open that back up so you've got your ribbon loop with your knot at the end hold it so that the knot is in the middle pinch it and you can see that that makes your bow and then just pop your wire like that hold all of that up out of the way and then just twist as tightly as you can there are other ways of doing it this is just one way so there's your little ribbon bow and for a little bit of extra and just to finish it off a little bit of florist tape hold it right up at the top there wrap it round that knot and everything loop it on itself or lock it on itself and then wind off down your wire and that just makes a nice little neat finish you again could probably do that with uh, half of one of the 24 gauge wires we don't need all of this so there we have it there's our bow detail there's our thistle head, there's our feather, and here's our leaf. So we're going to really just put the final assembly to this now. The way that I construct this is from front to back, but it's entirely your choice. Grab your feather and just strip off this sort of bottom bit. And place your feather we're just going to start getting a visual I like them slightly or I like it slightly off to the side bring in the bow do you want the bow behind do you want it in front I'm gonna go with it in front like that you can start seeing your visual grab your bow and your thistle head and then just at the bottom twist off that last little bit of wire you're next going to need a piece of a small piece of florist tape like that decide where you want your feather to go I like it there and then wrap the feather into your wires or wrap it around 
don't be tempted to put too much tape and build up the bulk too much initially we will be shortening things down there like like that and then finally coming in with that leaf and for this especially if you've got a bit of sticky from the florist tape if you just twiddle the very very tips it makes them super spiky and very thistle like you could even uh, use a little tap of uh, PVA glue if you wanted obviously you want something that dries clear but that's all that I'm going to do with that going to bring our thistle head in line it all up nicely if you're happy with the aesthetic wrap the two wires together there we go and finally what I'm going to do is bring in your tussie and just line it up a little bit so this end wants to be just a little bit under your thistle head and you don't want to go right down into the tip so about here and that's where you want to cut it off you could cut the wires as you go. Um, I tend to find that I like to cut them at the end. So a good, decent set of um, wire cutters. These are from B&Q and they're quite heavy duty. And I find that the little hobby wire cutters uh, just wasn't, they weren't strong enough especially when you get several wires together. So there's our head assembled. Now what I'm going to do is wrap one last bit of florist tape around the whole thing. Oops. So just down here, one wrap all the way down and I'm going to come off the end I'm going to come off the end and go back up a little bit snip that off give it a good pinch there, there's our brooch and now we're just going to check it with the tussie I think it might be a little bit too wide so that's fine I'm just going to take that back off I should have checked it first actually but there we go so I'm going to take a little bit more off of the bottom let's check it first there we go that's better that slides in quite nicely now I'm just going to use that last tick of tape all the way down just to give that neat finish and into the tussie it goes so push it down give yourself that arrangement and then this top part of the tussie just sort of crimps there you have it there's your brooch and it's an incredibly quick but an incredibly beautiful make and there we have it there's two well that's just about it for me in this hour and i hope you have enjoyed it as much as i have don't forget that you can pick up the quick kit for the highland thistle brooch 
over on our website and that includes the templates as well. You'll also find a lot of extras and free downloads on the website as well, including details for our wonderful autumn event, which is happening next weekend on the 12th. So just go have a good poke about on the site. You never know what you might find. <laughs> if you do fancy it, do come and join us in the Mums Makery Facebook group. That's facebook.com slash group slash Mums Makery. And for more felting tutorials, go over and have a peep at our YouTube channel. So thank you so much for spending your time with me today and wish you all a very crafty day. Mm -hmm.